All right, today is Saturday, March 23rd, and uh, we're going to do a hand analysis reading. Um, so just kind of like a little general thing about hand analysis. I'm going to look at the kind of the line formations and the markings on the hand as well as the hand shape. And that's going to talk about the personality psychology. So that part of the hand is somewhat changeable and, you know, it's different from the soul psychology, which can be found in the fingerprints. And that's kind of like your soul's reason for being here, your life purpose, your life lesson, and the overall theme of your life. Okay. So it, you're a combination of both. So it's like your life purpose is kind of like a consciousness that your soul craves to inhabit. You know, it's a, it, and it's a state of consciousness. It's not that like, oh, I need to be doing this or doing that. It's more of a state of consciousness that your soul craves to inhabit. So um, I'm looking at your handprints. Um, you have a combination of both. Uh, you know, kind of like the loop, and also you have a couple of tented arch loops, which are kind of uh, not so common. I'll get into that later. Um, but kind of like the overall hand shape kind of is like the overall personality. Um, mm -hmm. And you have a combination of both earth and water. And this combination is called, it's actually called Lady in the Lake. Um, both men and women equally have this type of uh, hand archetype. So, you know, earth is kind of like that solid, reliable, you know, like feet on the ground, your word is your oath, uh, master your domain. Uh, things are very simple, more like black and white. Um, you know, uh, love of nature, loves to work and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, the challenges with the earth hand is they tend to, uh, you know, have be carrying too much weight on their shoulders. They tend to be taking care of everyone else except for themselves. Um, and they tend to be not really touchy feely, um, and, uh, more self contained. Uh, and then, you know, when, uh, you know, if there's conflict, you know, between like, you know, like family or, or friends, it's like they go crazy because they don't know, you know, whose, whose side to take. Um, and then you also have the water element in your hand. So that's kind of like the emotional, empathetic, giving, sensitive, kind of receptive, um, spiritual, intuitive um, aspect. And uh, the challenges with the water in the hand is it can be, you know, uh, has, you know, challenges around boundaries, instability, wishy-washy, kind of stuck in other people's movies, um, adapting to the world, just like your chameleon kind of a type. Um, but when I combine the earth and the water together, um, you know, earth is kind of more about working with the hands and the water is more of the emotional, um, you know, emotional and relationships aspects. So um, this type of hand archetype is, uh, you know, the very nurturing and caring, you know, you see a lot of like, like body workers or nurses, you know, um, a gardener at like a spiritual center. It has a kind of a motherly type of energy. Um, I was thinking like stay at home dad is, is like a good kind of, um, you know, a uh, fit for this type of hand. Um, but the conflicted kind of combos that the, the lady in the lake can also equal muddy water. So it's like, it can end up in, you know, showing up as like difficult relationships, um, job kind of challenges, um, and also, uh, just unclear about life path stuff. Um, and a lot of this can also, a lot of the Lady in the Lake can archetypes tend to like choose really difficult people to be partners with um, because uh, they're kind of more the nurturing kind of uh, grounded, grounded type. So they tend to choose either people that are really fiery or really kind of uh, in more intense. Um, so, so the challenge is, you know, can you harness kind of like the mudslide energy? You know, mudslide is is kind of like very powerful because you can take out, you know, mudslide can take out a whole village. Um, so it's like, how can you harness that energy of the mudslide? Um, or else you're going to be stuck in the mud with a bunch of bozos. That's kind of like the, the inverse. Um, so yeah, your, your opposite type is going to be the illuminator type. And these people are the fire, fire and air types. They're usually the very, uh, you know, um, 
yeah, what do you call it? Uh, the healer, healer in the spotlight types. They tend to be very, uh, more out, very outgoing, I guess. Um, so yeah, the challenges with with the lady in the lake hand <clears throat> archetype. You know, can you make wise choices? Can you muster the energy? You know, to kind of show yourselves to the world. Um, how is the fire element? Because it's so the thing is like with the hand archetypes it's like can you integrate your opposite um you know your water and earth so how are the air and the fire elements being represented in the hand you know because earth is all about like you know results oriented and then the water is very emotional they're more about being and they don't have to do very much you know they can get lost in their imaginations and that's um how they kind of interact a lot of the times um you know, so yeah, I know you have a spiritual practice, um, so that's going to be very important. Also, the hand, you, you do have this part of the hand right here is is the ven Venus area. Um, so this is kind of like of the senses, um, you know, these people that have this, this uh, kind of a, a very dominant uh, Venusian aspect to their hands tend to be very much about like um, being of the senses, you know, like wine, women, and song. Um, uh, you know, uh, love and, uh, they can, they're, they're the very, they usually have really high libidos, um, pleasure, play, vulgarity, uh, passion. They have a lot of passion and, um, a creative energy, but how, you know, it's like, how can you express that energy in a way? Cause there's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of, so yeah. And, you know, looking at, uh, re relationship wise uh with the venusian aspect of your hand um you know the venusian type they must be in love it has to be very romantic and passionate in relationship so um okay so let's kind of talk about um kind of like the i'm gonna start with the soul's agenda so i'm starting with the fingerprints and this is the school is kind of like the overall theme of your life so it's non-circumstantial so um, it doesn't matter what you're doing. This stuff is going to show up no matter what. Uh, you have a combination. It's eight loops and two tenant arches. So this is called School of Love plus School of Wisdom. And it's actually one of the combo combinations. So it's kind of an unusual uh, school that you're in. It's, it's definitely less common. Um, so, you know, at your best, you know, School of Love has to do with, you know, emotional mastery, love and closeness, being able to express yourself authentically um, and maintain satisfying relationships. Like a big part of School of Love is like, how are your relationships? Um, are you able to express, feel, and communicate a wide range of emotions in the moment um, at, the, at the appropriate intensity? Um, you know, one extreme uh, School of Love people can, can kind of repress all their feelings and, and hold it all in and uh, not um, really show anything. And on the other end, that's when they're kind of basket case and they're just like, you know, spewing out emotional stuff everywhere. So before you kind of get to that just right uh, meeting ground, it's gonna go from one extreme to another. And a lot of people do that. They'll either stuff their emotions until it finally gets to that boiling point and then they'll, it, it'll explode. Or, you know, they're very, um, almost like, uh, it's like a fountain of, of emotions, like flooding. So you have that aspect, the school of love. Um, and then you have the school of wisdom and wisdom is, you guys are kind of like the wise elders. You guys are, you know, um, you guys are really good observers and it's all about taking the risk of personal exposure. So like being a participant in life, not just an observer, because the one thing a lot of people, uh, in the school of wisdom say is that they look back on their lives and they're like, oh, I, I kind of, I was kind of on the bleachers the whole time. I didn't really put myself out there in a way that really, um, I exposed myself in a way where I actually, you know, uh, you know, in, in uh, hand analysis, you call it like jumping off the diving board. You know, you have to kind of make these decisions. And so any sort of decision can kind of be like this high dive situation, you know, like asking, the girl out on a date or, you know, asking for a raise or changing careers or moving somewhere. It's like all these kind of seemingly, you know, decisions, they can actually either paralyze, uh, be 
you know, keep you in a paralyzing kind of, uh, standpoint or um, the other extreme of, of, of being paralyzed in decisions is to jump off blindly off of diving boards. So it's just kind of, you know, overleaping, just like, you know, these, another, you know, I read of one guy that also was in school of uh, wisdom and it was just like, he was like this, like uh, extreme sports person who was just like, oh yeah, I take all these risks and, you know, I, I go swimming with the sharks and, you know, I'm like a, a high diver off of the airplanes and stuff like that. But it's not really physical risk that that's really um, what's going to bring about the meaning and fulfillment in your life. It's going to be more of a risk of exposure, uh, emotional exposure where you kind of have no place to hide. So um, basically, emotional risk is going to be at the center of all your life's ups and downs. Um, you know, kind of like waiting for the right moment to ask the girl on a date and waiting for just the right time. And that time never, that right time never quite comes is kind of like um, an, an example of an emotional risk not taken. Um, another example would be like sharing some of your feelings, um, and hiding others is another kind of common thing. Um, and also playing it safe with mate selection. So, um, you know, uh, not really going for someone that you really are attracted to or someone that kind of meets you and sees you where you are. Um, and then also this can also show up as like where people will, uh, you'll, 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 uh, attract like a, an overly emotional spousal partner who kind of expresses enough emotion for the both of you guys. Um, while you kind of remain the calm one, um, so that you don't have to express yourself. You, you're like the, the, the grounded centered one while the other person is kind of, you know, um, the overly emotional one, but you know, it's basically, can you show your feelings or is it kind of like, is there hiding some of them, showing only some of them? Um, you know, it's one thing if you share with some, uh, share with someone that like you're sad because a parent died. Um, it's another thing to kind of share jealous feelings, you know, without kind of, um, you know, dumping on the partner, um, or even like insecurities, you know, um, that you have, but your, your life purpose basically requires that you take the emotional risk. Um, and you have to experience that through the experiencing process. So it's all about the emotional risk, you know, really being transparent in a way um, where you have no place to hide. That's that's going to be like a good juicy area for um, for like the overall theme of your life. OK, um, does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. OK. So we're going to move on to your life purpose. So you have a uh, right Apollo life purpose. Um, actually, both uh, Apollo life purpose. So it's the artist, the individualist, uh, master of creativity. So, um, you know, this is going to be like creative emergence is kind of at the center of your life. You know, going beyond technical proficiency to true artistry. Um, you know, fulfillment's going to come when you can express and pour yourself out onto your canvas of choice and stand back and be like, that's me. Um, and you know, other times, you know, because Apollo life purpose is about the applause, approval and appreciation. So part of it is, you know, being seen, being in the spotlight. Um, but you have to find that right, that just around just right amount of uh, display that kind of gives your true inner nature a chance to, to shine and be seen. Um, and, uh, you know, risking uh, being disapproved of, you know, that's part of it. There's the tomato fear, which is like fear of rejection, fear that people won't like what you're expressing. Um, but uh, yeah, the artist, is, the individualist, it doesn't matter the format, but it's, it's uh, you have to express yourself. You have to pour yourself out onto your canvas of choice um, and be in the spotlight. So it's one thing to kind of do stuff kind of, you know, in, um, you know, in by yourself. But the other half of this life purpose is that you have to put it out there in the world. It has to be seen. Um, yeah, that's the other part of, of the fulfillment for this. So yeah, you know, it's, it's about expressing your individual, your individuality in all aspects of your life. Um, and, 
you know, receiving recognition from your peers and, you know, being, being one of a kind. So, you know, state of consciousness, uh, what are you doing to kind of bring out your creative individualistic aspect? Um, you know, the obstacles, uh, you know, it's like living in disguise or, um, hiding out, you know, not, not really, um, uh, and tomato fears or choosing a stage that's too small for your, uh, capabilities. Um, yeah, let me just go back here and take a look at this. Yeah, so it's like, you know, how can you express yourself, pour yourself out onto your canvas of choice? And, you know, with the lady in the lake hand, um, having that kind of nurturing, um, you know, kind of a, a nurturing healing energy, um, how can you express yourself and actually bring, you know, muster up the energy and like show yourself to the world? Um, it's water and earth are very opposite. So it's, it's a very, um, it can be a very interesting, uh, combination. How's that shows up? Okay. Um, let's take a look at, um, the, the life lesson. Um, life lesson. This is an interesting one. This is the left, left Jupiter, uh, life lesson. Um, and it's called blocked passions. Um, and this is, this is kind of the, the life lesson, um, and it's about, uh, presence and passion. So knowing how to get centered, it's very similar to, um, when I was talking about the, the different schools, uh, school of, you're in school of love and school of wisdom. It's a very common thing to, to the school called school of peace, where it's all about, you know, stillness, being in the body. Um, one kind of aspect of this is that, the, the struggle is finding that one thing to be passionate about. Uh, a lot of the times, the people that I've read with um, Left Jupiter Life Lesson is that they are jack of all trades. They're good at many, many things. Um, and it's very uh, challenging for them to kind of just pour, you know, things, pour their energy into one thing, have that creative outlet, um, be very specific about it. Um, so it's, it's, it's finding that one thing to be passionate about knowing, you know, cause Jupiter is all about, you know, want, what do you want? The left hand is more about the inner and the right hand is more about the outer. So the left is more about what's the inner wants. Um, you know, learning the difference between what you really deep down desire and then just passing infatuations, you know, it's like, um, did you really want that 10th ice cream cone or was it more of just a passing, like, you you know, excitement? Um, so, you know, this can kind of show up as, as like a numbness or not knowing what you want, kind of a dependency or conformity, feeling kind of trapped. Um, and it can be very other-oriented. So your focus, the challenge with this life lesson is that, you know, the focus can go to usually it's the person you're dating um, or family. Um, you tend to be other oriented instead of focusing on yourself because the, um, live your passions, life purpose is all about, you should be doing this, what you love, tw you know, 24, seven, 365 days a year, um, you know, type like this is a type of a passion that should be engulfing you like fully. Um, and when it's your life lesson, it's, it's kind of the opposite. So it becomes, you know, um, feeling, feeling, uh, challenged to, to really focus on that one thing that you're passionate about. Um, yeah, it could be, you know, it could show up as like running around trying to help everyone else except for yourself. Um, you know, uh, being, being like a breath holder, you know, just like everything's like one, one emergency to the next, you know, is there time to like really sit down and do what you really want to do? Um, so, um, yeah, and you do have some extra prints. Um, the moon area is, I'm looking at your hand print, um, the right hand print. You actually have an interesting dermatoglyphic in the right hand in the moon area. And when you see that in the moon area, um, it's actually a teardrop in that area. 
and it's not very common actually. It's it's kind of less than one percent of the population. Um, when it's the life purpose, it is spiritual teacher. Um, so there's going to be an aspect of spiritual teacher uh, in flavor in your uh, you know in your life purpose. It's also linked to your life lesson. Um, so uh, you know the world is is God's message board for you. And, um, you know, spiritual teacher is a life lesson, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, kind of suffering this crisis of meaning, like needing, like you have to kind of endure the alienation and stagnation and isolation. You need to kind of go through the difficult times in order to kind of, you know, be able to guide others out of that. So it's kind of like, you kind of need to have like lost and hit rock bottom and, and found your way out of that in order to kind of be a powerful healer and spiritual teacher. It's like you've kind of been there and done that um, in order to kind of guide people. Um, so um, that's also a very important thing. What I do notice uh, what's kind of interesting is um, the zones in the hand. So um, a lot of the, the zones in the hand... Um, when I see with spiritual types, it's usually the fingertips that are really um, developed. And in your hand, it's actually the middle zones. And the middle zones are all about the material world, you know, kind of like um, uh, the homestead, you know, the, the, the acorns, a surplus acorns for the winter. So mm-hmm. this is kind of has to do with the material world. So you're able to kind of... Um, you know, have, you know, cross your T's, dot your I's, have money in the bank, kind of proper attention to, like, material affairs, um, and, uh, you know, make a good living for yourself. That, it looks like the, the material world is really, um, for, for you, it's, it's doing well. Usually when, um, so this is kind of an unusual thing I don't really see very often, so it's kind of cool. Um, you know, so it's money in the bank, you know, proper attention to affairs, ducks in the row, kind of stuff like that. But it's the security. So, so the, the material security is that happening at the expense of your life purpose. So is there too much attention on, you know, making money or having extra acorns for the winter? That's kind of the metaphor, um, for, for this hand, this hand type, uh, for the zones. But, um... Yeah, so when I kind of combine, I'm going to kind of combine your your life purpose, so the artist in the spotlight, um, with your school, which is school of love and school of wisdom, so kind of, you know, emotional risk um, leads to you kind of gaining uh, wisdom through experience, so, you know, putting, I know you do music, um, but it could be, it doesn't have to be music, it could be anything that you're able to kind of put yourself out there in the world, and um, it has to be, like, you can stand back and be like, that's me, so, um, you know, it's different, like, I've done, like, when people do, like, creative stuff for their work, um, but are you able to, like, express yourself, have an outlet where you can, you know, really express yourself that is, um, you know, not tied to, uh, anything that has to be commercialized. Like when I, when I think about like my film, um, composing, I can kind of express myself, but it's not fully like I can express myself. Um, so it's, uh, it's finding an outlet for that, for where you can fully express yourself and, um, show yourself, be, be in that vulnerable, uh, position um, cause it takes experience. That's the thing with, with your school is that you have to kind of put yourself at an emotional risk, um, in order to, um, you know, gain the, 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 the meaning and fulfillment points basically. So, um, there, there are a couple challenges. Um, so I'm looking kind of at the, the base, the base of the hand. So there's kind of like a, a little bit of a football kind of where the, the lifeline meets your fate line. Um, and that's called burden of expectation. So this is, this is a challenging marker because it, um, hand analysis, it doesn't say that you're doing this or you're doing that. It basically says this is how you're wired. 
So it's different from saying you're doing something or, um, you know, that this is what's happening, but it's like you are wired to do this. And, you know, maybe you um, are aware of it. Um, but, uh, so this is, this is basically, you know, trying to live up to other people's expectations. So feeling obligated to do what everyone wants of you to do rather than, um, what you really want to do. So it's basically trying to like satisfy other people's expectations of you. Um, and it can cause resent, like resentment around that, you know, trying to please everyone. It's like, you're kind of, uh, being weighed down by the heaviness, uh, of, of having to live, um, for everyone else instead of living for yourself. So these are pretty big burden of expectation. So I would say that that's kind of a red flag. Um, just there's certain markers that, that I do see and then I, and I point them out because it's like, okay, this could be really hijacking, um, someone's life. If I see this, especially when it's more than one, that means it's more of that. Um, but there is, you do have a, what we call a via lascivia in the hand, kind of in the moon area. Um, and that's kind of a line of escape. And so this is kind of like a curiosity, kind of wonderment, um, and exploration. Uh, so this is kind of an important kind of aspect to your life. Uh, finding like an hel a healthy outlet where you can kind of really explore um, a lot of this on the spiritual hand types, you can kind of see it as like studying or applying higher realms of consciousness into their, their lives, um, versus, you know, lost in the consciousness of, of like drugs or alcohol abuse. Um, cause that can also happen as well with the via lascivia. It's basically, you know, these people need to, you know, have some sort of escape. They need to kind of get out of, of whatever, um, mundane world that they're living in. And so, um, it can be a very powerful marker actually. Um, if you have it, what you do. Okay. Let's see. So I'm also looking at the headline. Um, so kind of towards the end of the headline, you have some markings right under the mercury finger. Mercury is a pinky finger. So this is kind of, um, called the healing stigmata. So, uh, with the, the interesting thing about like having a gift marker is that you have to use it. You can't not use it. Um, and it's basically the gifted healer and basically you're the psychological insight guider, growth consultant, uh, counselor type, um, meant to, uh, help guide people. And this was, this was a marking that was seen in a lot of, not doctors, but actually the nurses, the, the, the people that actually worked with the patients, um, by their bedsides. So, you know, really working with people, um, kind of intimately, um, to help them, um, and, you know, kind of finding your, your, your niche as a healer, you know, it's usually what is the wound, um, you know, what, what is your own wound and how can you make that a specialty? Um, so that would be, and then the common obstacle with, with this, um, is, uh, with this, uh, gift marking is, uh, trust and surrender skills. Um, can you trust that you do have the power to kind of, um, be a guide, be a guide for people, be, um, you know, kind of like the Persephone who, who kind of guided the lost souls in, in the underworld. Can you be, uh, this healer? Do you believe that you have the, the capacity to do this? Um, and so if you don't use this, this is actually a, a gift marker where, um, in relationship you, so, so I'm talking about in like partnership in relationship, uh, this is a gift marker where you would want to put your healing, um, you'd want to put your healing, uh, guess your healing business ahead of your relationship. And that's actually going to help your relationship. Um, so if you don't use this marker, if you're not, you know, using the, the gifted healer marking, then it can end up as blocked intimacy or intimacy breakdown. So basically, um, challenges in the, in the relationship department. So it's, it's, uh, definitely something that, um, needs to be put first. Um, 
Okay. So let's take a look at um, what I also kind of noticed. So if you kind of follow the headline down, the headlines, um, the headline that kind of goes kind of towards the center of, I'm looking at your right hand, um, but you have, it's, it's a bunch of triangles. Um, let's see. So triangles are kind of interesting. Um, because it kind of indicates some sort of special talent, and you actually have a lot of triangles in your hand, kind of in the center, um, and in the left hand as well. So it kind of indicates some special talent, um, but it's like, how are you feeding the creativity? Because um, it's a very, uh, it's a, if, you're, if you're not feeding the creativity, then the, the talent can't really be fully expressed. Um, and the challenges, you know, with your life lesson is, is, you know, not knowing what you want to do, um, and then the, and also, um, you know, the, 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 not being in the body, a lot of, another thing for the, the left Jupiter life lesson that you have, uh, blocked passions is, you know, presence and passion, um, can you be fully present with yourself, can you tap into your passions, um, and so those are going to be challenges because you do, it's like you have a, an immense amount of talent in your hand, um, but how can you, you know, use, utilize it? Um, cause it's, it feels like it's there. Um, yeah. So how are you, uh, able to kind of, um, feed your creativity more and express yourself more, um, and say what you want to do more, um, because the challenge is also going to be, you know, you're, you tend to be, I guess I shouldn't say you tend to be, but you're wired to focus on other people. Um, and with the burden of expectation, that's another thing where it's like, you know, feeling hijacked by other people's, um, they're what they want. Okay. So I'm looking at the heart line. Um, the heart line's kind of at the top top of the hand and if you look at your right hand it's kind of like a straight line it kind of curves up and then there's this other line that kind of goes straight right through it and then the left hand also is kind of uh there's another kind of straight line through through the top um i'm listening what's that i said i'm listening oh okay so um Basically, you know, your heart line looks like it wants to be a Clint type of heart line. And the Clint heart line is, is uh, you know, the heroic, stoic, kind of understated, uh, reliable, predictable, loyal, um, you know, feelings kind of percolate on the inside. And your work or freedom comes first. Uh, you know, there's no necess unnecessary display of emotions um, and your feelings are shown through doing stuff. Um, and, but it looks like it's like the line kind of curves, uh, straight. So it's almost like it's your, your true heart line and heart line is how we interact in, in relationship, how we, um, you know, show ourselves. And, uh, there's a, there's a line of attack. It's kind of like a straight line across under the Jupiter finger, um, and that kind of, it's kind of like a line of attack. It could be, it's a little bit, I'm a little bit unsure of it, but, um, you know, it's kind of like it turns, it goes from a, a Clint heart line to a Michael heart line. The Michael heart line is more of the, well, what do you want type, you know, well, what do you want to do? Well, <laughs> well, what do you want to do? So the Michael heart line is, is more of the think, think, think about how you feel, 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 um, and uh, they tend to have the tendency with the Michael Hart line is the replay button. Did did she mean okay or okay or okay? So it has this uh, flavor of like the, the tape kind of being stuck on, on replay. Um, and uh, they tend to over process. Um, so, so yeah, so, so the, I would say, you know, uh, the big... Uh, one of the big themes in the hand is um, the 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 me versus you. You know, putting energy uh, focusing on others versus focusing on yourself. Um, 
you know, how, how can that be sabotaging not only the creative uh, expression, but, um, you know, how, how you are with uh, boundaries and relationships. And, um, you know, because your life purpose is a very, it's focused on yourself, right? It's going to be more um, me-ish. And there's lots of talent in the hand, you know, the triangles, um, the kind of the special talent um, but there's also, there is a diamond, um, kind of a frozen, and that's kind of frozen energy whenever you see a diamond. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's under Saturn Apollo. So kind of not allowing yourself to kind of feed the creative energy. Um, let's see. So yeah, you know, um, this also could be an Apollo line. Let's see. Let me blow this up a little bit more. Yeah, you have kind of, there's kind of a few lines that are like, huh, okay, okay. Like on the, you, on the left hand, you have a, um, a wow marker where it's like, it's a line that goes to the, the pinky finger, to the Apollo finger and to the Saturn finger. And usually it's, when it's super clear, it's like, you know, all channels open, you know, lots of energy. Um, but when you see stuff like, uh, there's little bubbles and stuff, um, then it kind of um, adds, is, turns into more of a challenge, a challenge marker. And it's under Apollo finger, and the Apollo is all about expression and creative energy. Um, so it's like... Uh, it wants to be, you know, where the channels are, are clear, wide open, and then there's just a lot of, um, how are you feeding your creative, your creative energy? Um, you know, how, what's the balance of, uh, me, me-ish versus you-ish in relationships? Um, and, uh, you know, saying, saying what you want, being able to articulate what you want, um, you know, instead of uh, getting getting stuck in the mud, getting stuck in the mud with a bunch of bozos, that's that's the inverse of this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of you know, if I kind of sum sum it up, um, you know, life purpose, passionate ar ar artist, uh, expressing yourself in the spotlight. Um, being one of a kind, um, you know, not, you're not meant to blend in. I mean, you guys are kind of meant to be seen. That's kind of part of the life purpose. Um, expressing your individuality no matter what. You know, you could be going to, I don't know, a friend's house, but you have to be expressing yourself um, in all aspects of your life. And then also, you know, taking your creativity to the next level finding an audience that's, you know, um, big enough for, for your capabilities. Um, yeah, finding that just right amount of display because the other part is like, you can do like the one guy who's doing the model T cars, he just did them in his garage and they never, no one ever saw them. It's like, so part of this life purpose is you got to put it out there. Um, Otherwise, uh, it's kind of hiding, hiding energy and um, kind of, uh, you know, it could be hiding out or um, playing it safe. And that's a very uh, related to the school that you're in, the, the theme of your life, which is school of, school of love, school of wisdom. Can you take an emotional risk where you have, there's a possibility that you could get shot down. There's a possibility of you could be rejected. There's a possibility that people won't like what you do. Um, can you put yourself out there in the world and take the risk, you know, that, you know, there might be some people that don't, don't like how, what you have to create, but, um, your, your life purpose is going to depend on it. Like, you know, feeling like you are dialed in, um, inhabiting this consciousness, this, this energy where you feel like you're on top of the world um, you're going to have to take these risks. Um, you know, playing it safe is, is going to be one way of kind of, uh, you know, um, 
you know, it can, that can lead to disaster as well. Um, you know, just waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen and it never quite, the time never quite shows up and you kind of miss your chance. Um, remember the biggest thing with the school of wisdom is that these people will sometimes look back on their lives and they'll be like, I, w I didn't really participate in my life. I just kind of watched from the outside. And so, um, you know, to really kind of get, get you know, uh, life purpose points, I guess, um, to really kind of uh, inhabit your life purpose takes this emotional risk. So jumping off that diving board um, and, you know, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, think it over, you know, but the main thing is that you're good judgment comes from bad judgment and you're going to have to like take these risks in order to kind of learn about good bad judgment um and uh you know getting off of the the bleachers and like actually jumping in um and it's it's basically emotional risk rather than like oh i i just went skydiving or i uh scuba dived with with the the marine life with the sharks it's not so much physical risk um or bungee jumping it's it's emotional risk you know expressing all the feelings being transparent um and so relationships is going to be very big because it's also in your hand shape as well uh lady in the lake um you know the mud can you can you kind of harness the energy of the mud slide uh, because that's going to be unstoppable energy if you can do that, and then, um, but other, if it's on the other extreme, you know, mudslide, and then there's also kind of like the, um, the muddy water, where it's like, emotions are just, it just really, uh, clouded emotions, not knowing what you want, not knowing the direction you want to go in, um, and relationships kind of hijacking you is going to show up, um, so being aware of those things, being able to track, you know, how is how is the the mud, the lady in the lake, uh, kind of showing up in your life, um, tracking these things so that you can um, be less controlled by them, so that you're more in the driver's seat. Like, oh, okay, I see. This is how I'm wired to be, but I don't have to, you know, go into automatic response. I can actually. Um, have decision I can actually choose how I respond to this rather than kind of going to the default which is what most people do um, when they're unaware of this stuff um, yeah and then you know school of love is, is all about expressing a wide range of emotions you know using the heart as a compass um, being able to express yourself fully in the moment without um, you know, full, full, uh, appropriate intensity, kind of completely in the moment, not waiting a week later and then expressing yourself. Um, let's see. And then life lesson, you know, blocked passions. Can you tap into, you know, um, remember it's not, it's not what you do as much as how you do it that that's really going to bring about the, um, you know, that, that kind of fulfillment. Um, so when, and these people, when they know, you know, what it is that they're passionate about, they're some of the most uh, interesting, clear-headed people and exciting people that, you know, um, I've met. It's just that you know, dialing into, you know, what's that one, one thing that you can be fully excited and passionate about that, you know, um, and questioning, you know, questioning, did I really want to do this or is this kind of just this, uh, something that seemed nice in the moment? So really kind of going into yourself and asking, what do I want? What do I really want? Um, I would even, you know, because this is your life lesson, have something on, on your mirror and just write, I want on a piece of paper. What do you want? And asking yourself that, every day what do you want to do um because it's uh, it's very easy to just you know be other oriented and focus on the other people focus on someone else especially usually it's a relationship partner um you know instead of trying to you know focus on uh, how are you expressing your creative energy um 
Yeah, because it can show up as, as, you know, on one extreme it can show up as, like, you know, Mr. Plate, sticks and Plates, the guy that's, like, twirling, the circus guy that's, like, twirling all these different sticks on plates. And it's just this constant, like, emergency, like, oh, this adrenaline energy that ha- that's just, you know, nonstop. Um, and the other extreme of, of that is, like, you know, checking out. It's just, like, you know... Um, you know, it's like uh, just being completely out of it. And, and that's usually, you know, I sometimes see it with like alcoholism or drug abuse. Um, so so kind of finding that middle ground of presence, of, of being fully present in the body. You know, life isn't just emergency after emergency after emergency. There's time for play um, and you can feel safe in the body as well. Um and yeah, the spiritual spiritual teacher, you know, marking in the hand, um, you know, uh, having to kind of endure depression, isolation, stagnation, having to deal with those those uh, not so easy emotions in order to kind of find yourself and come out of it and to help others, to give them psychological insight is going to be very helpful. Um, awesome. And yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the heart line, you know, you know, uh, so, so kind of the overall theme is going to be, you know, focus on self versus focus on others. Um, it is very easy. I would say this hand shape, this, these lines, these life purpose, it could be very easy to focus on others, um, and be hijacked by other people's movies. So how can you kind of call back that, uh, Senor- seniority to kind of mm-hmm. focus you know what do you want you know asking yourself what do you want instead of you know because the, the 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 life uh sorry the heart line is a very michael heart lines are all about what do you want to do no what do you want to do mm. um but i actually see your true nature is actually more of a clint heart line and you guys are more of you know your work and freedom come first relationship comes second (laughs) so um you know uh you know the clinton heartline is more of the freedom they 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 like they don't like clinginess um they tend to you know their style and relationship is like i'm busy i'm busy um but they have the gift of loyalty and uh this is the the clint heartline is an earth earthy heartline whereas the michael Heartline is the thinker, you know, like the does okay mean okay or did she mean okay? That's more of like the air heartline. Um, they tend to over process and they tend to be about the other person in relationship. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I would say, you know, the next step is going to be tracking these different things, tracking your life purpose, the artist, the individualist, tracking your life lesson, blocked passions. Tracking the school, school of love, school of wisdom, um, you know, are you taking emotional risks that put yourself out there in the world? Um, and then also, you know, the, 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 you have the triangles in the hand, so like these hidden talents, um, but can you, you know, how, how are you kind of feeding the, the creative, uh, how are you feeding your creative self, um, and then just, you know, the burden of expectation, you know, where are you trying to live up to other people's expectations? Where are you feeling obligated that you have to do what everyone else wants you to do instead of doing what you want to do? Um, you know, so uh, that can lead to resentment. And, you know, the Via Lascivia, that's a, that's a, that's kind of a cool marker. That's, that's kind of like you guys are, are the explorers, like escape line. It's an escape line. It's basically, you know, having some sort of, um, uh, you know, I guess one sense it could be drugs and alcohol, but the other sense it's, it's a healthy outlet for an exploration, um, you know, studying higher realms of consciousness, um, you know, but finding a healthy outlet for that. So, so yeah. Um, do you have any questions? No, that was awesome. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, you know, the main thing is you have all this information and what are you supposed to do with all this information? 
start to track it, start to see, okay, I see where I tend to give up my seniority in relationships or I tend to try to live up to other people's expectations. I mean, it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to track overnight because this is like, um, you know, this is what's in your hand is in your life. It's like this is uh, this is how you're wired. This is like your brain is mapped out on your hand. Um, so, uh, but tracking it, being being aware of it, is going to give you, um, you know, so that you can be in the driver's seat rather than, you know, being kidnapped by your by your life lesson, or you know, just these default ways of kind of uh, interacting with the world. So. Um, yeah, but I just just a really kind of unusual thing is that the middle zones of your fingers are very well developed. So it's it's that's a that's a plus thing. That's definitely makes you more able to kind of function in the world. You know, a lot of the spiritual types tend to be um you know, usually struggling in the material world. And with you it, it's it's looks like it's a stronger um stronger element in your hand. Yeah, so the middle zones, kind of like the middle zones here. But yeah, usually it's it's the, the tips that I see, those are the developed ones, but um so it's kinda interesting. It's just people's hands are all, all kind of different. So you never know what you're gonna get.